Hi, in this week's episode, what are we talking about? Traditional carne asada. Mm-mm-mm. So good, so tender. We're showing you how to trim up that chuck roast and make this so tender. Add in some good charred smoked peppers and tomatoes. It is great flavor. It is great tradition. Come on, I'll be glad to set you at the table. Hey, thank y'all for stopping back here in the back of our brand new coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Well, it ain't brand new. It's been open over a year, but this is sort of brand new here in my little cooking area. Ooh, it is a great day. And folks have been asking for this recipe for a long, long time. When is the cowboy going to do it? You reckon he could do it? Maybe so he could do it. So I asked the beagle, should we do it? And the beagle said, yes, and that's carne gasada. Uh-huh. Now, Originally, this dish come from Puerto Rico and then sort of migrated up through there through Mexico. And traditionally, when it's carne gasada, G-U-I, it is made of stew meat or beef meat that is chunked. Now, through the years, as it's come up on through Texas and all up through here in Tex-Mex tradition, everybody want to be thinking that it's skirt or flank and you put it over on a grill and you get a lot of smoked flavor to it. Well. We're going to show you how to get that smoke flavor, but it comes from another thing, and that is some charred peppers and charred tomatoes, so you don't want to miss none of that. Everything that we use today will be listed right down there in the little link below, and hey, I am ready for me some authentic Mexican food, so let's get after it. So, traditionally, as I was speaking, it was either stew meat or maybe some chunked up beef of some kind. Now. You can buy stew meat, but a lot of times when you buy it, it's in pretty good big size cubes, and I like to cut this down a little thinner, so that's why I, I like to really use a chuck roast. Now, I'm not going to just cut in here, just keep going across here. I'm going to sort of go by the guidelines that this meat is showing me. So try to separate it there, get the most out of the muscle that you can, and then we'll go back here in just a minute, and we'll get to chunking it up in the right size. Now you can see this is a pretty good piece of gristle right here. So we're gonna cut that thing out and I'm gonna show you a trick that I learned a long time ago. Now, when you cut this out and you leave this much on there because you're thinking, how come did he leave so much on there for this right here? Well, I'm gonna tell you, it is for the guard dogs. Now this is one guard dog, the beagle who has worked for us for no many years. Good job. And where is the major mountain dog? Right over here. Good job. Okay, that's what you do with your scraps. So you ain't got them piled up here nowhere. It's not a health hazard. You're not going to trip over them. Bring your kitchen helpers with you. So let me get the rest of this trimmed out there, and then we'll come back and dice it up. We got that chuck roast sliced up. Now you're talking about stew meat. You know, they would probably be more like this big and be pretty bulky, chunky like this. Well, I like to cut mine to where they're pretty thin, and you don't want to get all that beef fat out of there because we want that to render down to make that broth, which is going to be so good and tasty. So when you got it in there, I need you to get some of that. You know what it is. That Kent Rollins, that original season, it goes well on some beef, it does. Give it a little sprinkling right there on top. Then let's just get your hands in there. Just want to make sure that all of it gets about of that seasoning. Make sure everything is seasoned well. And I'll meet y'all over at Bertha. Well, we got over here to Bertha and we have turned the heat to medium. That means the fire is halfway up to here, licking out the hole here. Now you've seen in this new Bertha, and I'm sure y'all seen it before, but them eyes pop right out of there. And this is a 12 inch deep Dutch oven and it'll fit right there and it's smoked tight. Now you don't have to do this in cast iron. I prefer it that way. You can do it in a stew pot, something like that. But hey, I like it like that in here. We have us some butter and some oil that has already been melted. I just want you to put this meat in there. Make sure you get everybody. And we're going to leave it over this medium heat till we can get it to brown just a little. But the best thing to start to doing that with and to render that fat down is to put that lid on it. So we're going to check it again here in about 10 minutes. Give it a stir. It's probably going to go about 20 before we get that broth to where we like it. And then we'll add some more goodness to it. Well, we've been on about 15, 18 minutes we have, and whew, we have got us some good broth action going on there. I need you to take something where you can take that meat and put it over here to one side. And if your kitchen is on level like mine is most of the time, and see that good beef broth in there? Don't think we're going to get rid of it and just throw it away, but we need it to come in later. So drain all you can out of there. 
The reason we get that broth out of there is really to let this stuff go ahead and sear there a little in that piece of cast iron and get a little more color to it. Now, don't think you gotta get every drop out of there because as it cooks, that too is gonna disappear. And this will take a little bit to brown, but just let it sit there and stir it pretty well often. Or maybe that would be like nearly constant, pretty well often, you Shed. Stir constantly? Pretty well constantly, yeah. Just to make sure that nothing burns, but you wanna give everybody a chance to get good and brown there. Well, you can see that that is pretty well browned up and there ain't no really no broth left in there anymore. So what I need you to do is them two serranos that you had on that grocery shopping list, go ahead and dice them up pretty good smallness. Smallness. How about pretty small in size? About three or four garlic cloves, whichever you prefer. Cause remember, garlic is a great antibiotic and this time of year we really need it. Two white onions been chopped up. And we're just gonna cook that till them onions begin to get tender. But give it a good stir, make sure them onions are tender, and then we'll continue on. They've been cooking about four or five minutes and you can see that everything has got some really good color on them onions and they are looking really nice. So scatter her out there, even amongst the playing field. And we're gonna put in a little flour. I don't want you to dump it all in there in the same spot because we need to get this meat coated with some flour. Why, you say? That's gonna help thicken this broth and all this stuff when it gets done. So give you a sprinkling right there to first for one of them tablespoons, and then put that other tablespoon right in there behind it, and you'll be good to go. We're gonna let this brown and cook for about another four to five minutes, and then it'll be time to add some of that goodness to it. Well, it is time to add that broth that we had hid back, and mm, that stuff is be looking good, it does. Now some of this flour might have tried to stick down there at the bottom. You make sure you get all that off there because I think some people call that fond. I think is what it is. Me, I'm fond of it, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it all in there and make sure you get to the bottom. A dab of water. Keep stirring it right up here to get everything mixed. Make sure you get them sides and the bottom, everything scraped off there and back in there. And folks, smell it. They is a tremendous, a lot of flavor. Now at this time, you need to reduce that heat down to about a medium low. That's a little hard to do on Bertha, so we're gonna do it this way for just a minute to slow that thing down. Things is looking mighty rich and scrumptious, dilly oh so in there, I'm telling you, things is happening. Now after you added your water back and your broth, give it a good stir, like I said, you may have to add a little more water to Tell get back in there. The I mean, is. you can see that it's just about covering all the meat with the broth but and the water we got, but not too soupy, because it's gonna thicken a little as we begin to cook it. But at this time, we need to give it some cumin, mm-hmm, and then we're gonna add some whole oregano. It's just got so much more flavor than that stuff you shake out of there. Give it a little rubbing as you run it down in there. Now, while y'all wasn't here, but y'all might have seen it, uh-huh, you did, I took me two Anaheim peppers, or you can use two hatch green chilies, whatever you got, and what? four poblanos. Put them over here on the grill with three Roma tomatoes and we charred them really good. I mean really good. Then you just take them out of there, take your Walmart sack or whatever plastic gag you got, sprinkle a little water in there, throw peppers in there, wrap them up. Don't put them all in the same bag, it's too much. The tomatoes, we're gonna sort of rough chop the tomatoes. You can leave the skin over because we're gonna get some flavor off that. When you take them peppers out of there, they peel so easy. I mean the easiest things in the world. I don't need the stem, I don't need all the seeds. Huh? Rake them out of the way, slice them in long thin strips, cut them in half, and guess what? It's time to throw them in the pot. So in go the tomatoes first, and then come the peppers. Mm. And I like some peppers in mine, I do. And folks, we're gonna stir all this up. Got it on low heat here on Obertha, if you can find such a thing. And we're just gonna let it sit there and simmer, covered, for about 45 minutes to an hour or until your meat gets fork tender. Now you come by here every once in a while and you stir it and you might have to add a little more water or if you want, add a little beef broth in there. But make sure you reserve that broth in there because we need it for everything to get tender as it's simmering right along.
Ain't that a pretty sight? I mean, that cooked up so nice in there in that Dutch oven. You can see all that color in there, them poblanos and them anaheims and that tomato. But folks, I think the star of the show might be that meat that is oh so tender. When it is fork tender, that's what I'm talking about, then let's pull it. Now I've served this many different ways. I've just seen it dished on a plate with some of our refried beans and our Mexican fried rice. And hey, we've got links to both of them videos. You can check them out. But also, I've seen them just come by, dip it out of here, slap it on a flour tortilla. We didn't even put no cheese on it. I mean, because I want to taste that's what it was. But you can sprinkle you some cheese on there, sour cream, whatever you want. But the thing you gotta put on it, that's your mouth. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. Mm. Hang on, that's so good, I'm going back again. Whew, big. Mage, I mean, that's what's happening right there. It make you want to do the slip and slide, get so easy, going back for more. Mm -mm -mm. Do a little moon walking on the way back by. Shuffle, shuffle, and I'm talking some of that good. Y'all have seen me fix a lot of traditional Mexican recipes. Folks, this right here is a keeper. This is something that I'm gonna eat. I have even served this, and maybe some of them you won't be down on me. I've served it over mashed potatoes, served it over rice. This stuff is so good, you can just eat it by itself with some cornbread and crackers. So, mm, fine dining it is. As always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women, and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying out there and everybody that is keeping us safe. We appreciate you one and all we do. And like I've told you so many times, we never take it for granted that you sit down and you watch our videos. Y'all are family to us, and family counts here, it does. So gather your hands around all of them, reach out there through your back door, get the neighbor's hand, have him get the next one, because folks, we need to make more friends and more family. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down. I've done mo eat most of this carne asada trail. <laughs> Burglar alarm has sounded. Hang on, Shin. This knife is worthless. Mage, do you like a stove? Warm. Do you like it, Mage? Ooh, 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 ooh. Attack! It's okay. 